my name is Dr. Ruthie. I'm a sexuality educator and a relationship expert, and I do some blogging over at exploringintimacy.com, but today I'm here with the good folks at funwares.com to answer your questions about sex and relationships. And lately, I've gotten a couple folks asking a question that is near and dear to my heart. They want to know what sort of options are out there these days for safer sex, and what sort of idea, uh, kind of activities should they be using barriers and safer sex protection for? Great question. So let's talk about how to do this and how to keep it fun, shall we? Um, the first logical question is, why use protection at all? And some folks would say, well, obviously, Dr. Ruthie, you want to be having safer sex because it's safer. But there is more to that than that simple answer, as good as it is. There's lots of good reasons to be using safer sex. One thing I like to bring up to people is it is not only safe, but or safer, but it is also a wonderful form of foreplay. There's all sorts of things we can do with our lovers that build anticipation and excitement, and there's no reason that using safer sex can't be one of those things. For instance, if you have ever enjoyed kissing with someone who wears a classy, stylish pair of glasses, you know the anticipation that mounts when they look at you and remove the glasses before coming in for a kiss, right? And we never say, oh, those glasses, they're so unsexy, get rid of them. We come to enjoy that and even see that as a, a tantalizing bit of foreplay to add into our sexual experiences. Same thing with wearing clothes. Sure, we all joke, you know, or some of us joke anyway, the people I hang around with, that if there were no clothes, there'd be nothing getting in the way when we're with our partners and wouldn't that be lovely. But the undressing, the sensuality of reaching around the clothing, all of those sort of activities becomes a wonderful part of foreplay with our partners. So these things that we do to prepare ourselves for sex, to signal to the other person that we're ready to take the activities to the next level, that we are ready for them to go ahead and enjoy us and for me to enjoy them in a different way, these are all wonderful things. So why not do the same with our different safer sex supplies? Absolutely. It's all in your frame of mind and it should be an exciting green flag that something really fun is about to get started that you're interested in. So why not have those things there? Um, it's safe, it's clean, it's a wonderful excuse for communication and for letting our partners know what we like and what we don't like. Um, we can work in all sorts of things that we want them to know about us and about the kind of sex we enjoy when we are also opening the conversation about safer sex. And like I said, it's a great form of foreplay. So what sorts of activities should we be using safer sex supplies for? Then we'll talk about what the supplies are and, you know, how to mix and match. Um, you know, this really depends on the level of risk that you're willing to take and um, understanding the risks that are involved with different types of um, activities. If you're looking at it from the purely safety perspective, if you're looking at it from the foreplay perspective and from other perspectives, then it could be that you just like using them with everything because it adds in more fun and excitement. Um, if you're looking at it from a risk perspective, of course, the highest risk activities um, without protection would be any kind of intercourse, whether it's penile anus or penile vagina, um, regardless of which end of that that you're in. So um, that's something that we want to be using protection for because it's the highest risk activity. Uh, down from there would be our different kinds of oral interactions, oral penis, oral vagina, mouth anus, all those, uh, those genital type areas are things that we want to be considering protection for as well. Um, they are less risky than penetration, but that doesn't mean they're not risky. Um, there is some debate in the research about uh, you know, some of the risks there, but definitely some things we know can be uh, transferred that way. Um, and then some folks also want to be using barriers on their hands um, for manual stimulation of any of the genital areas, vaginas, penises, clitorises, anuses, you name it. So these are the different areas that we want to be covering interaction with um, from a safety and a foreplay perspective. Um, so which ones do we want to be using for which types of activities and why? Well, just the very basics of sexually transmitted infections is that they can be transmitted in three different ways. Um, the first is just skin-to-skin -skin contact, so there doesn't even necessarily have to be any kind of penetration for this. This is something that can, uh, any diseases that fall under this kind of category can be transferred um, from mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, from mouth-to-genital anus, and, and from skin-to-skin, -skin, from genital-to-genital. -genital. So um, those sort of skin transmission things are ones we want to be really careful of and we don't necessarily think about. 
Um, of course, then there's things that can be transmitted through sex fluids, right? So um, anything that comes out of your penis or your anus or your vagina. Ooh, there you go. Um, and then, of course, there are diseases that can be transferred that are bloodborne as well. So we may want to be careful with that. Um, that can include tiny lesions in your mouth just from brushing your teeth that you don't even see and know happen. Um, or that just happen in intercourse from friction. So we have to be careful with those as well. And, and those can go through mucous membranes, which is the kind of the sticky gooey parts of your body, and uh, as well as for tiny lesions. So being careful with all of those kinds of different ways. And that's why we use the protection when we're talking about risks for infection. What will protect you from what? A male condom will protect the penis and any parts of the partner that are touching what is covered on the penis by the condom from, from any of those three, skin to skin, um, uh, sex fluid, and blood. Um, so those offer very high levels of protection for those. It won't help you from skin to skin for anything that isn't covered by the penis or any parts of the partner that are touching something other than the penis that may have an infection. And of course, if you or your partner don't have any infections, then the risk is low. But it is, uh, it's, it's, well, if you have no infections, then the risk is not there um, or for as far as infections go. But it doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean that you uh, necessarily know that your whole background or your partner's whole background is so much easier to say you have nothing than to actually know that you have nothing. Uh, we all want to have nothing. That doesn't make it so. Anyway, um, so we have that. Uh, female condoms are wonderful for all three. Again, on the areas that are covered and protected by the female condom. This is the condom that goes inside the vagina. I've done videos on this as well. Um, again, uh, the bloodborne, the skin to skin, and the sex fluids transmission, um, as long as it's in the area where the female condom is covering. Um, gloves are great for the skin to skin stuff with hand. You can get latex. I always suggest nitrile because some folks have a little sensitivity to latex. And uh, I would suggest the unpowdered ones. You can pick them up really easy in the diabetic supply aisle of your uh, local pharmacy. Most pharmacies have them. And uh, the last one that I want to talk about is dental dams or saran wrap or to be non-branded uh, plastic wrap. Not the kind of funny, perforated-y looking stuff that's made specifically from microwaving. It's labeled that way, but just your regular plastic wrap. Um, and dental dams, they're made specifically for oral genital, including oral anal contact. They should not be used for any kind of penetrative activities at all. Um, and so they will help to keep a barrier there. And you can have all kinds of fun with all of these things by, uh, you know, adding in yummy flavored lubes and, you know, lubes on both sides for both partners, all kinds of fun stuff that you can do with them. So definitely be creative. Um, just don't flip it around because then you've just exposed each other to each other's stuff. So don't, don't flip your barrier ever or reuse your barrier. Um, plastic wrap, there's a little debate over that because there has been a little bit of research on its usefulness that showed it to be good for some types of protection, um, but I think that we could use more research about it. So it's a little tough to say, but um, it can be easier to find and a little easier to pick the size barrier you want than a dental dam. Of course, dental dams are, uh, are a little more tested for effectiveness. So those are your different options, and people use different amounts and different layers depending on what you negotiate with your partners, but most importantly, what you need to feel safe and healthy and take care of yourself and to be responsible to the partners that you have. Statistically speaking, most of us will encounter some kind of an STI at some point. Herpes alone, um, whether it's caught sexually or through other activities, uh, exists in a very, very large portion of the population. And so we have, uh, we have lots of reason to take this seriously, but also to have a lot of fun with it. Like I said, there's lots of ways of having foreplay, and uh, why not include your barrier methods with that as well? We need to come up with a sexier word than barrier methods, but it uh, can be a wonderful form of enticement and teasing. So those are your different types of uh, protection, and the next video I'll be doing will be some ideas on how to suggest and break the topic um, into the conversation of using protection with your partners. I'm Dr. Ruthie. I hope that this was helpful for you. Uh, I've done videos on how to use all these different kinds of protections, so go ahead and look them up if you need more information, and I will see you in the next video.